Liao Zhang from Hong Kong Baptist University. I'm glad to be here sharing our research exploring high quality microbiogenomes by assembling the group with high barcode specificity using deep learning. This is the table of content of my presentation. It will have five parts. Firstly, I will introduce the background of metagenome sampling, short wave sequencing, and the deep learning sequencing. Next, I will describe two previous deep learning assembly methods. And then I will introduce our proposed method called PANJA and the results in the mock communities and the, the real human gut microbiomes. This final section is the conclusion and QA. Uh, let's move on to the background. Metagenome assembly is one of the main steps to reconstruct metagenome assembly genomes from the unknown microbiome communities. There are three standard steps to generate the images. The first step is the metagenomic sequencing. It will generate sequencing reads, which are shown from the unknown microbiome communities. And the next step is the metagenome sampling. It will concatenate <coughs> read sequences into longer and uh, non overlapping uh, sequences called contigs. Because a genome in the original microbiome community can be assembled into a large number of contigs. So the final step is to bring the contigs set originate from the same microbe together uh, into a bin and the code of the MA2. Uh, next, I'd also like to introduce some background of sequencing. The short wave sequencing is the most commonly used sequence technology. Uh, from the input on the DNA, it will fragment the DNA into some 500 base pair fragments. These fragments are sequenced by some sequencing machines. Uh, some popular short wave sequencing technology include the Illumina sequencing and the BGI sequencing. Uh, the sequencing will produce the uh, parent short reads. Um, the two reads of a grid pair come from the two ends of the 500 base pair fragments. And usually, with the sequencing, will produce a large amount of sequencing reads that will cover the input DNA uh, over time for folks. This is to ensure that the coverage is. Uh, sufficient for the next genome sample step. But uh, the short read sequencing has a major drawback, which is uh, the short length of the short reads will limit its power to assemble complex genomic regions such as the repeat regions. So from the short reads, we can only get very fragmented chaotic sequence. To mitigate the drawback of the short read sequencing, increased sequencing. Uh, Integrate some knowledge information to the sequencing. From the input unknown DNA sequence, it will be fragmented into some non fragments of several kilo bases. And the non fragments are sequenced by some increased sequencing technology, such as uh, universal sequencing, tail se uh, sequencing technology, and the uh, BGI groups, single tube non fragment re sequencing. Uh, so the increased sequencing will produce the short reads from the non fragments. And the short reads that are sequenced from the same non fragment, they are noted with the same buckle. So the buckle will uh, indicate the long range information of the long fragments. Uh, this is a comparison between the short read sequencing and the long read and the link read sequencing. You can find that the only difference between the short read and the link read is the link read has a buckle that contains non range information, and this non range information could be used to improve the metagenome assembly. So, in the next part, I will describe two previous liquid assembly methods, class space and the SINA. Before introducing the two liquid assembly methods, I'd like to first describe the basic method for genome assembly, which is the diagram graph approach. To construct a DBG from the read sequence, it will take the K minus one parts as uh, from the reads as all the vertices of the graph, and all the K minus of the reads will provide an edge from its starting K minus one bar to its ending K minus one bar. To reconstruct the genome sequence from the DBG, the target is to find a logarithmic circle that traverses each edge once in the graph. But in practice, the DBG can be very complex, so uh, we may not find uh, 
a real circle that exactly would traverse the edges in the graph lines. So uh, in practice, we simplify the division into a subject graph by connecting non-branching passes and uh, solve the repeats using, using the coverage information of the edges. And after all the simplification steps, um, an edge in the subject graph will be outputted as a unique sequence. The cloud space is a link with assembly that is based on the DBG. It reconstructs the non fragments of the link reads on the DBG and uh, uses these non fragments to guide the path resolution in the DBG. It has three steps. First, it will build a contracted assembly graph by only using the long edges in the, uh, in the DBG. This is because the long edges are more likely to be marked by the bubbles. And next, it will create a transition set T from the CDB. Each element of T is a pair of adjacent edges in the CDB that are supported by shared barcode information. And it will also construct a T-compatible cloud set C that contains the passes that are uh, supported by the shared barcode information and also supported by the transition set T. And the cloud set C contains all the reconstructed non fragments. In the final step, it will find an allegorical circle that contains all the long fragments reconstructed in C. The basis will it can resolve some complex regions that cannot be solved by short reads. A C9 is another link with sample that improves assembly by filling the gaps between the context using local assembly strategy. It will build a scheduled graph from the context generated by DBG based samplers. Um, the contexts that are adjacent to each other in the scale graph, they are also adjacent to each other in the genome, but, they, but, but there are gaps between the contexts. So the next step, I think now we'll recruit the reads from the gaps between each pair of the contexts using the shared background information, and it use local assembly to assemble the contexts from the recruited reads. Uh, and the, the assembly of the contexts can cover the gaps between the Context and the two context adjacent contexts are linked together, and the contiguity of the metagenome assembly could be significantly improved. In the next part, I will introduce our proposed method. Metagenome assembly is facing two major challenges. The first challenge is uh, there are a large number of microbes in the microbiome community, which will make the uh, assembly graph very complex. And the, the second challenge is the microbes living in the microbiome community have very balances which will make the path resolution in the DBG very difficult. And because metagenome sample is very complex, so the DBG based cloud space strategy has limited power to solve complex microbiome community. And the local sample of ACINA may fail to resolve regions with these complex graph structures. So in our proposed method, we uh, adjust this issue by applying the rate spinning to decrease the complexity of the metagenomic data set before assembly. So how to do rate spinning for the link rate? Um, we consider the short rate spinning tools, but they cannot work on link rates. This is because, uh, firstly, the short rates are too short to be uh, it tries a stable sequence composite features such as uh, KMA frequency features. So the existing subreads in tool say will check the overlap between each pair of the subreads and will build a very huge overlap graph between the uh, between the reads. Um, and uh, secondly, the read overlap graph based uh, clustering methods are very slow because the graph have a large number of nodes and edges. So uh, we tested the existing subreads in tools on our metagenomic dataset and find they will take weeks to finish. We also considered using the long read in tools, but the long read in tools can also not be used in the link read spinning system because firstly we will need to transform the link reads into long reads before using the long read in tools. But there is no uh, available tool to transform this uh, data format. And uh, it will also take a long time for some of the non-reading tools, such as the ARB 
we also tested this uh, to uh, uh, metagenomic data set to find it will take over a week to finish. So we need to divide our own to bring the inquiries. And our method is to bring the co barcode inquiries with high barcode specificity. As I described before, the read data sequence from the sample fragments they share the same barcode. But uh, we can also see that a barcode can be shared among several non fragments. And if a barcode is shared by more non fragments than the reads with the same barcode, they have a higher probability to run to different macros. And we will say the inquiry sequencing technology has a lower barcode specificity. So all inquiry sequencing technology has low barcode specificity, such as the text genomics inquiry sequencing. Each barcode of text genomics inquiries will correspond to approximately 16 non-fragments. And the best new inquiry sequencing technology will have high barcode specificity. For example, the VGS single tube non-fragment read sequencing, uh, each barcode uh, is shared among nearly 1.5 long fragments, and as the USD still seek increased sequencing, each barcode is shared, is shared among, on average, four long fragments. So the reads with the same barcode from the new increased sequencing technologies will very, are very likely to be on to the same macro. So we can treat the code barcode increase as the smallest root binning unit, and the sequence the sequence of in the uh, billing unit could sum up to several kilo bases, so they can be extracted as stable sequence features for binning. There are two commonly used uh, features for this binning. The first is a camera coverage histogram. To get this histogram, we will calculate the global frequencies for all the cameras, and for each co barcoding read, uh, we will count the number of cameras with different global camera coverage and get this uh, histogram. This is the illustration of the camera character histograms for the three bands of different balance levels. The left part of the figure is infected by sequence errors. Uh, if we neglect this left part, then we can find the high length band will obtain the cheap value at a higher camera coverage, and the medium band will obtain the cheap value at a lower camera coverage. So, Peak value of the low band band are absorbed in these uh, sequence error regions. So if we use a uh, large K such as K equals 15, then the camera coverage histogram can reflect the abundance features of the co-barcode ingredients. And we also use the touch and nucleotide frequency feature, which is also called the form of frequencies. Before applying the read spinning, there is one more step to do, which is uh, weighted sampling. Because uh, the macro of in the in the, in the macro one can have very imbalances, so the metagenomic grids of different macro also are very highly imbalanced. If we want to use some deep learning models to constrain, then we must balance the data set before applying the models. Um, to balance the data set, we use the weighted sampling using the sampling weights calculated from the camera coverage histogram. If there are no sequence errors, then the FSA is close to a Poisson distribution. Then we can simply estimate the abundance of the FSA using the uh, camera coverage that obtains the highest value of FSA. But in real cases, there are sequence errors. So the camera coverage that obtains the highest value of FSA is very unstable. Instead, we use the square of the maximum of FSA as a sample weight based on our observations because we find the maximum value of the low abundance band is the highest, and the maximum value of the higher abundance band is, is the lowest. After extracting the features and the applied the weight sampling, we use a variation autoencoder to cluster the weight uh, to decrease the dimension of the input features and create a lengthening embedding. Uh, the variation autoencoder auto uh, it assumes the uh, lengthening band satisfies a uh, Gaussian distribution. This is a visualization of the lengthening band. And we can see that the data points from the same macro set are gathered together, and the distribution of data points of, with, of the same macro set are close to the uh, normal distribution. 
Uh, note that we only apply submitted something to generate re, uh, balance, uh, balance batches for the training purpose. So selected event is still very highly imbalanced. Two clusters the data points in the latent event we apply the RPHK means algorithm. Uh, it is robust for the event data. To be first, use random projection hashing to reduce the data points to create a balanced data set before applying the k-means algorithm. This is a comparison between the RPH k-means and the k-means plus plus algorithm. On a small, small highly imbalanced data set, we find the RPH k-means could produce accurate results, but the k-means plus plus algorithm will generate wrong results because it chooses wrong centroids. After the read spinning, we uh, assemble the reads in each day separately, but there is one additional step to do, which is to rescue the low bias networks. Because the binning first strategy works well for the high and the medium bias network, but the reads from the low bias network can be distributed into multiple bins, so there will not be sufficient reads for the assembly of uh, for the assembly of the source low bias networks. So our strategy is to align the reads back to the context assembled from the beans. And we extracted the reads that are mapped to the context with a uh, balance lower than the threshold, and we assemble them into the context set for the lower balanced macros. So all the contexts are merged using MetaFlare, the subassemblies module, to produce anchor context. And those anchor contexts are merged with a signal local assembly strategy using quick merge. As a reason to merge with the local assemblies of a signal is is that the risk finish strategy will create high quality contexts for some for, for the high complexity regions of the genome, but it can also produce some low quality contexts for for the simple regions of the genome which can be uh, sim sim simply which can be handled by the local sampling strategy of the signal. So the building first strategy and the local sampling strategy they are complementary to each other to some extent. And next session, we will describe the results of our method. We evaluate our method on the HCC MS31 thousand data set containing 20 strands of very dependencies. So dependency fall into four categories. And the data set is sequenced by Chelsea and the single chip ground factory to the sequencing. This is the result on the HCC MS31 thousand three on the low abundance networks with abundance lower than. 1% and we can find that our assembler produced a uh, higher genome fraction than the other two link resemblers and also produced a uh, uh, significantly higher total length that with the context longer than 10 kilobases. Here we don't compare with cloud space is because the cloud space uh, takes too much memory in our data set which exceeds our machine limitation. And we also evaluate some contiguities on the HCC MSA. 1003 data set on MJ15, you find the Panda produce significantly higher in MJ15 than all the other three assemblers. We also com compare the N15 and NA15 for the contiguities, and uh, our assembler also produce a, a higher N15 and a significantly higher NA15, which demonstrates that our assembler will produce high contiguity assembly. We also uh, evaluate the Assemblers on the real human gut microbiomes, we use the uh, near complete images to evaluate and find our assembler will produce significantly more near complete images than the other assemblers with higher than 50. And uh, we also plot the number of near complete images against the read depth and find that our assembler will significantly outperform the other assemblers on the on the uh, images with uh, read depths higher than approximately 200x, which uh, indicates the read spinning strategy will benefit a lot for the generation of the unseen images for those medium and high complexity macros. Uh, this is the conclusion. We propose the link read metagenome assembly tool that improves the link read assembly by deepening based read spinning. Uh, Panda improves the genome fractions and total assembly lengths for the low bandwidth networks and increases the contiguity for most of the strands in the mock community. 
and our assembly could largely increase assembly M15 in the number of near config images on the real macro bound data. In the end, I'd like to express my gratitude to my supervisor, Eric Wujang, and my co workers for their kind support to this project. To, to this project. Thank you for listening. You have free to ask any questions. Maybe this is more stable uh, for the other statistics. 